Hello everyone, welcome to my channel, Deborah Extra Art here. So uh, about a month ago I did a live where I used uh, some weeds to make some botanical uh, underwater themed prints. So I thought it'd be fun to try that again today. So I've got different weeds. I've got different masks. These are from uh, PM Artist Studios, these cool jellyfish. And then I have some die cuts uh, from Stamping Up. I have my little um, seahorses, fish, and uh, octopus. And I recently received this uh, 12 by 14 jelly plate from uh, a friend of mine on um, YouTube, uh, Peggy Fitzmorris. And uh, I thought, well, let's try this out. It's uh, She sent it to me. Um, it's used, but she's never used it. So it's basically a new plate. So I'm gonna crack that open and um, we'll try to play. I've never played on one this size. So I'm looking forward to giving it a try. So I took it out of its clamshell. That was a bit noisy. So I uh, pause the video for that. I'm just going to take off this acetate sheet. I'm going to put it on a white piece of paper, flip it over. Um, yeah, let's do that. Let's just put that on flat. Flip it over. And that'll give us a nice uh, base to sort of look at. And I'm going to take this off. So I don't have uh, a huge roller, the biggest roller I have is a four inch roller. So that's going to be a challenge. Okay, look at that. So clean, oh, it's beautiful. So I think my biggest challenge in this is going to be getting the paint um, rolled out without it drying as it is very uh, dry where I live. So, you know what, uh, let's just try it, see what happens. I'm going to use some blue and a little bit of green and I've never used this so I don't know how much it takes so let's just try it. And of course I don't have my brayer off sheet handy ready to go so I just kind of want just a random background. The thing with this being this big is I don't have a lot of room on my desk. So, let me do that. That's what we have the floor for, right? So, let's put down some of these jellyfish. And because it's a big plate, I'm going to try to get uh, lots of things on here. So we got three jellyfish. Let's put a random little octopus down here. And we want to use some botanical elements. So I just picked these up when I was out for a walk with Lucy. I tried to grab things that gave me sort of like an underwater vibe. Mostly weeds. And grasses. This one's really sticky. My goodness. Let's put this one up top here. Okay, and use this. Um, I feel like I need something more over here. Got some more grasses. That's too big though. Oh, what the heck? I did that. All right, let's press that down. Pick up some paint. Hopefully, I didn't take too long. I don't want it to all have dried up. Just a paper bag. Get all those little details. Now, 
I find craft paint dries a bit quicker. That's why I'm using this uh, the arts paint. And I'm gonna put just a little bit more here. Well, that already dried. Oh well. So here's our pickup. If you can see the colors, okay there. Lift up our plant material. As I'm editing this, I'm thinking maybe this would have been a good place to stop and um, brayer on another color and then add some textures instead of doing what I'm going to be doing next. Um, you'll see what I mean. So the paint was very uh, thick when I put it on. So these didn't pick up all of the paint. They didn't absorb it. Whereas the die cuts being paper, they did absorb it. These PM Artist Studio um, masks are actually uh, Yupo paper. I wonder if I press that down, if I'll get an imprint. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Some of this paint is still dry I could, or wet, I could get, no, I waited too long. And then I want to add um, some additional textures. So I'm just going to use some PBO Violet Blue, um, just kind of here and there, and then kind of around the elements and just add some And some textures like uh, that. Here's a this is a quilted crop circle. That. This is what I meant. So instead of doing this piece by piece, trying to fill in the gaps, if I would have just left the die cuts and masks on there, I could have just put one big layer of this PBO um, violet blue paint and then done different textures here and there. Um, but this works okay too. It's just a little bit more finicky, just to give you options. So at this point in the process, I basically stopped talking and I was just fiddling, adding more of that pink and some textures. I'm thinking I'm going to pull the final print using um, the PBO blue violet or blue green, yeah, blue green and a bit of aqua. So I know that with the pink, that's going to make sort of a nice little purple color. Um, I'm going to add some purple to the jellyfish here and I know that there's some green in the background. So it's going to muddy it up a little bit. Um, this is a, a color shift purple and I'm going to add some more colors to give it a bit of depth. Uh, this is a metallic orange I add to the fish and I'm just doing some finger painting. Later I pull out a uh, paintbrush. Um, I'm adding a bit of brightness to that octopus and this is a magenta. I'm going to um, just finger paint the seahorses. 
for now I'm going to add um, different ways of painting here and this gives it some depth just fiddling there I decide to make the seahorses match but not exactly match adding a bit of that orange because the orange and magenta make a, a cool like pinky orange and then I thought oh, I can use the outline from the die cut to uh, fill in the seahorse Just adding layers. So obviously I've sped this up, but I'm just taking my time with it. Um, here I'm taking a uh, dioxazine purple, and I'm going to add um, this just to add some depth to the print. And I use my paintbrush. I want to get that octopus nice and dark. And I don't mind that you can see the brush strokes. I'm adding a bit of texture on that octopus. And uh, just loosely painting in the um, tentacles, or not tentacles, whatever jellyfish have those little appendages, those wispy bits. Just adding some purple to that. And this one I'm going to follow the, um, the stripes on the top to um, keep part of it brighter. You'll see here, so just add to the stripey part. You can see where the purple crosses over the green, it's sort of a brownish color. Uh, which is why I'm going to be back painting the elements with white so that they keep more of their true color. Here I'm adding a bit of that darkness to the base of the of the painting or the jelly print to sort of ground it a bit down there make it a bit more mysterious down below and some brightness I'm adding this uh, it's like a fluorescent pink to the tops of the jellyfish and then um, I will add it to the seahorses a little bit too and I think to the little fish and we'll see I can't remember now I did this yesterday you think I'd remember but So I'm happy with how that's giving it sort of a, a luminescent brightness. I'm not being super precise. Um, a little bit later I realized I kind of missed that uh, seahorse's belly as well. Come back and I'll fill that in. Don't worry. I really enjoy bright colors. I know it's not everybody's cup of tea, but um, this is just fun for me to use these bright colors. I really like the ocean and the sea, and uh, this is a pretty big print. Um, I used, um, I'll be using a 14 by 17 mixed media uh, Canson paper to pick it up, and I'm not planning on like framing it or print, you know, hang it up in my house. Uh, probably what I'll do is I'll probably cut it down and make a journal cover with it. Um, so here I'm adding some white um, just to preserve those areas of um, brightness. So the jellyfish, um, the seahorses, and the fish. So I want to keep them pretty bright. I don't want a lot of the blue where, that I'm going to use to pick up to muddy it up. So this works pretty good for applying that coat of white. But these are pretty thick layers. Um, so before I can do the other seahorse, I wipe it down and let it dry. And then I'm looking for the um, template or the leftover from the fish and I cannot find it anywhere on my desk. So I have to paint that one by hand. And my finger. <laughs> All right, so we can do the other side of the seahorse or the other side of the template. And that's just so much quicker. But I was off a bit, so I just readjusted it. 
but I leave the octopus without any white because I want him a bit darker, like as if he's uh, far away, he's not close to us, he's sort of lurking in the depths. So now it's just a matter of waiting for those layers to dry, especially those uh, white layers. They're pretty thick and you want that to be totally dry so that when you put the, um, the last coat to pull off everything, it has a chance to uh, dry to it and not pull up the, uh, the white paint. So I'm just pressing with a napkin just to get off um, just a little bit of the um, wet layer of white paint. And I decided to pull it with a combination of this um, opaque uh, craft paint, which is more of a turquoise color, and this PBO uh, blue-green iridescent, which is uh, more of a see-through color. And we're just going to um, just haphazardly put that on randomly. Here we go. Let's try it. I do this all in one pull. edges down and then I'm going to let that sit for a bit before we pull it. Fingers crossed. That was a lot of fiddle, fiddling around. Usually I do a bit more uh, randomness, I guess. We'll see. Let's see what happens. That's lots of layers on there, so I'm going to push it down very well and then let it sit for a bit before pulling it. All right, see you in a few minutes. In about 15 minutes, uh, I took a peek earlier. Let's uh, see if it comes off because that was some pretty thick layers. Fish looks good. First jellyfish is good. Ooh, yeah. that seahorse is sticking. Let's see how this side does. That jellyfish looks good. Octopus looks good. I think it's just those jellyfish in the middle that are going to be problematic. Uh, let's see. That one looks okay. Come on, last seahorse. We just have a teeny bit left behind, but that's not too bad. All right, so here is my very first print on this big jelly plate. So here's our close up with a little extra lighting to show the shimmer. A little octopus hiding in the corner. I didn't back him with white because I wanted him to be kind of dark and mysterious. So there we have it. So that's the first uh, print done on my large plate. And thank you again to Peggy for sending me this awesome uh, jelly plate. I think I'm going to have lots of fun with it. All right. Thanks for watching. Bye.